Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to talk about littoral combat ships. Battleship New Jersey's film crew was invited to be a part of the press pool of the commissioning of USS Savannah in Brunswick, Georgia uh, in February 2022. As part of that, we got a tour of the ship. Now, this was my first time on a littoral combat ship. They're relatively new vessels as a type, and uh, people still have a lot of uh, questions about what they do, what they're designed for, how they're made, all that stuff, even though they're in the news quite frequently. Now, the first point I have to bring up as uh, we go through this video is there's going to be a giant banana in the background of uh, most of the footage that we show. Um, it would be pretty funny if I just left the expl explanation there. The Savannah Bananas are a baseball team in Savannah, and the ship USS Savannah, her crew, has uh, adopted their mascot as their own. So our particular tour of the uh, ship included some sea cadets and uh, some press and also a giant banana. So there, there's that. It, it makes sense, trust me. So uh, let's transition from that into the first comparison between an LCS and a battleship. Now LCSs are significantly smaller. Unlike battleship, destroyer, cruiser, the name is actually incredibly descriptive of what they do. Littoral combat ship. They are actual fighting vessels that are designed for littoral operations. Littoral meaning coastal as opposed to open ocean where you might find a battleship as designed. Uh, as operated, Battleship New Jersey found herself just as close to shore as she could get with her 38-foot draft uh, for shore bombardment, which was not one of the planned uh, primary uses of the ship. Savannah has a single 57 millimeter Bofors gun. Uh, I am sitting at Battleship New Jersey's remaining 40 millimeters Bofors gun. It is built by the same company, uh, but that's pretty much where the similarities stop. Uh, Savannah's gun is called the banana thrower. The 57 millimeter gun has the stopping power to take out small boats aircraft and to penetrate the armor on the types of modern ships that they would be expected to engage in a littoral environment. Much like um, many of the guns on the battleship, it is also a dual purpose weapon that can be used in an anti-aircraft role if needed. Uh, it is largely unmanned. The gun is automatically loaded and fired and has all of these uh, complex mechanisms in the uh, gun house, which you can see. It is significantly less manpower intensive than one of our Bofors guns, which has a 12-man crew manually dropping ammunition into the top. So um, that's another major comparison between these two ships. A littoral combat ship only has a core crew of about 40 sailors, and uh, with its full loadout of a mission module and, and other uh, sailors embarked, the crew tops out around 70. Uh, so it is significantly less manpower intense than a battleship designed for 2,000 people with everything being manually operated. This is critical in the modern all-volunteer Navy. How do we get enough sailors to man all of the ships in the fleet when we're only doing volunteers? Battleship New Jersey was part of an all-draft military where the Navy could just take as many citizen soldiers as it needed to outfitted ships, and so these ships are incredibly manpower intensive. The transition to an all-volunteer military in the 70s has led the Navy to get crafty in reducing manpower requirements on ships. In the 1980s, they were able to reduce the manpower on the battleships by about a quarter, uh, and now, 40 years later, they've reduced manpower on ships like the littoral combat ships even further. Battleship New Jersey did terms of deployment uh, during World War II and in the 1980s that were around a year long at times. Uh, and so the massive crew was required to maintain a lot of the ship. That isn't the intention with littoral combat ships. The United States has bases all over the world 
and these ships do not have the endurance to stay at sea for that long. So they can come into port and uh, receive maintenance work by contractors rather than having the crew do this. The ship is very heavy on folks with uh, high levels of training for the sophisticated electronic equipment as opposed to a bunch of non-rates, 17-year-old uh, kids that have just been drafted who are only there to chip paint and uh, drop ammunition into the guns. Additionally, littoral combat ships, like some other types of ships in the fleet, have uh, two crews, a blue crew and a gold crew. So one crew can come into, or the ship can come into port, and one crew can leave the ship and go on leave, and the other crew can be brought in. Uh, and not just leave, they can also do shoreside training, A school, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that is a uh, very interesting modern concept that the surface Navy is taking from the submarine force, which is probably the most efficient part of the modern Navy. Uh, so that, that's a good carryover there. Battleship New Jersey only once ever did something sort of similar. During her nearly year-long tour off uh, Lebanon in 1983 and 1984, uh, the crew was kept out at sea for so long that they started to rotate sailors out and call up reservists to uh, send to the ship. And that's pretty unprecedented in the modern Navy to uh, replace a large portion of the crew while the ship is underway. Um, but that was an unprecedented deployment that has not been matched in length by the modern Navy since that time. Uh, and so the, the concept of taking uh, this two crew philosophy from the submarine force and applying it to surface warships to uh, increase their time that they can spend on deployment is uh, something I'm really impressed by. Mission creep has always been a big problem with warships, uh, particularly Kriegsmarine warships, but uh, no country is immune to the concept of mission creep. Warships are expensive, uh, and so it's very common to try and shoehorn as many different capabilities into that vessel as possible. Uh, so German destroyers, some of the least efficient ships ever built, uh, were designed to be commerce raiders and escorts and uh, gunships more powerful than any of their contemporaries and have high speed and be survivable and carry torpedoes, anti-submarine stuff, and be able to lay mines. Uh, and so German destroyers were significantly larger and less efficient than their counterparts uh, and you know what? They, they couldn't be built in the numbers needed, and uh, they absolutely got their teeth kicked in whenever they tangled with Royal Navy destroyers. Uh, looking at you, Narvik. Mission creep is a huge problem. Uh, battleships were designed to do one thing, to fight it out with other ships. And they were able to provide shore bombardment and anti-aircraft protection, do all sorts of other things because of their size, but uh, that wasn't part of the design. They weren't designed like German battleships to carry torpedoes for commerce raiding and uh, their own acoustic equipment for uh, underwater detection and uh, all of that stuff. They were designed for one job. Uh, and likewise with the littoral combat ships, there are a lot of different missions that could be encountered in coastal waters, such as anti-submarine warfare, mine sweeping, uh, and anti-air uh, missile defense for the fleet. And so the Navy initially looked at this as a modular system where each ship uh, would carry a single package that could then be rotated out. That's not specifically mission creep. The ship is only being designed to hold one thing, which keeps the size, weight, and cost down. Uh, but now you're making multiple packages and you're storing all these packages and the trained crew at these forward bases so that you can swap them out. And that concept never came to fruition. So the Navy has since reverted, uh, and now they are building littoral combat ships with a single package each uh, that is not intended to be as swapped out as readily. So the, mis the mission of these ships is contracting, which is a good thing. Having a ship that is specifically equipped and trained for anti-air warfare versus mine sweeping versus anti-submarine warfare uh, is a good thing. For actual uh, fleet defense, for ships that do all of that, 
We've got the destroyers. The, the Arleigh Burke class destroyers are one of the best surface combatants in the world right now. Uh, we, we've got the new Constellation class frigates on their way. Littoral combat ships don't need to do everything, especially not at that price point. One thing the littoral combat ships do really well is operating at high speed, but also having an efficient cruising speed. I'm really intrigued by the engineering plant of these ships. Uh, we were not able to go down and check them out for ourselves, but it is so radically different from Battleship New Jersey or any other vessel uh, that it warrants talking about. The littoral combat ships have uh, no propellers in their engineering plant. They instead use propulsors, uh, basically like uh, jet skis. So this was a concept that the Navy used during the Vietnam War with littoral ships, such as the PBR Mark IIs, uh, that they took from civilian type boats where you are pushing water out of the back of the ship to propel the ship forward. And uh, the Navy took that on a larger scale with the littoral combat ships. So they, they use propulsors, and uh, like many other ships are using, they have a combined power plant uh, that has both diesel generators for slow but efficient cruising and gas turbines for when you want to crank the speed up to 11. And uh, with these gas turbines engaged and two more propulsors going, that allows the ships to go at greater than 40 knots, which uh, is significantly faster than an Iowa class battleship and probably the fastest ships in the US Navy at this time, although the exact speeds of nuclear ships are still classified. The final thing to compare between the two ships is armor and construction. Littoral combat ships like Savannah, the, the Independence class in particular, are all aluminum construction, which makes it uh, lighter, more corrosion resistant, and not requiring paint, We've done a whole video on, on why they chose aluminum. Check that out in the link below. Uh, but it gives you a lighter, cheaper ship, which is what the Navy is trying to do here. We are, uh, whether people acknowledge it or not, in an arms race with China right now and the People's Liberation Army Navy, uh, which is expanding significantly faster than us. So being able to put out small and cheap ships that can patrol on anti-piracy missions, which is a big issue around the world, or in littoral areas and anti-terrorism stuff um, is very important. These ships can also be used around South America for the war on drugs that uh, is still ongoing. And this frees up full-sized uh, destroyers, frigates, cruisers to go and do what they're designed to do instead of being uh, entirely too big of a hammer for very small nails that need to be whacked. Uh, the one uh, drawback of aluminum is it leads to a relatively low protection vessel. And like we talk about in the aluminum episode, that's not a huge issue. These ships aren't designed uh, to take miss missile or shell hits like the battleship is designed to. If you want a well-armored ship, build a battleship out of steel with an armored belt. Uh, if, if you want a patrol craft that's going to be operating in littoral combat and is uh, cheap to repair and replace, build it out of aluminum. The LCS is still an unproven concept and has gotten a lot of negative press, but at the end of the day, they are the future of the Navy. The types of operations that the future Navy will be running and the technologies and equipment that we're gonna see on future ships. I don't know if the littoral combat concept will continue, but the angled stealthy type hull forms aluminum plating uh, and the trimaran hull form is something that we are absolutely going to see on future classes of warships and it's really revolutionary in design which is why there have been so many teething problems thus far which aspect of the littoral combat ships do you think is the most groundbreaking let us know in the comment section down below Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. And there's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to continue to support the museum. You can also help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.